Welcome back to Fishing with Vance. Well, I've come to the end of the uh, 2022 Pelican Bass Raider modifications. And uh, this will be the third uh, video of uh, for this year's modifications. And um, if you haven't seen the first two, uh, I'll put a link in the description. You can go back and watch uh, part one and two. But this is the final one. And uh, today I'm not going to really, you know, I didn't film what... Uh, how, while I was uh, making the final touches on the mods for this year. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through it and show you how it all turned out. I may have one more tweak that I need to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet, but uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So, thanks for coming along today. Let me show you what I got here uh, for the modifications for the Pelican Bass Raider for 2022 here on Fishing with Vance. The first thing I'm going to show you here is... Uh, one of what would be three different configurations uh, for the boat. So the first one will be uh, when two guys are going and I'm going to a lake that I can use uh, my new Honda uh, outboard motor. So I'll step through that process first and some of this obviously will stay the same but uh, what I'll do is I'll walk you through how the boat turned out for this. Um, I'd say a perfect example of this when I go to Cross Creek uh, with my buddy Steve. And uh, this will be a perfect place for that. So let's step through that for this. Then when I'm done with that, then I'll uh, shut the camera off and I'll reconfigure the boat as if it's gonna be, um, you know, basically just me fishing with at a lake that has the gas motor. And then last but not least, um, just me fishing at uh, one of my electric only lakes when I'm by myself which is a lot of the time but I am switching it up this year and we'll get to that in a second so without further ado let's get to what we changed for this year some of this has already been covered in part one and two so I apologize but um, let's get right into it so start around here to the back obviously we got the Honda uh, 2.3 outboard motor this thing's air cooled i've been watching lots of videos on uh you know how to maintenance it and you know how it all works and all that i don't think it's uh all that all that complex um i am trying to figure out whether or not i'm gonna bring a gas can on board with me um i don't think i'm gonna run this thing wide open but um we'll see I i'm not sure about that I, I don't i don't really want more things on the boat so I would probably just uh, you know run it at half speed um, for most of the time, get where I want to get, and then use the, the trolling motor for the rest. So, all right. So there's the there's the gas motor on the back. Whenever I go, I left these on here, even though they are gonna kind of be in the way. But I think what I'm gonna do is cut this guy down, and I think when I'm sitting here, I'm gonna be tilting it up like this anyway. So I think I'm gonna be okay. Worst scenario, I'll either take this one off and just go with one or that's probably what i'll do i don't need two back here because you know we have this we have the table and uh, i just need one to put my pole in so i'll probably just take that guy out and uh, go from there but for purposes of this uh video i left it on now moving up obviously we've got one of the seats one of the things we did, and, and I would have had this in the prior video, I cut this table down that used to be a lot wider. I took, I don't know, a good six inches on both sides. So now as you can see, it's nice and narrow. Um, the one thing I'm thinking of doing, and uh, this was something that my old partner wanted to do and we never got around to it, but you know, these brackets, they do, they, they prevent you from, even though I cut the table down, it prevents you from sliding this chair <clears throat> further this way. So I'm thinking about um, cutting this back, maybe about between three and four inches on each side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And <clears throat> that would give me, you know, that would give me and the other guy that I'm fishing with, you know, eight more inches or four inches uh, further back which would give you know, a little bit more a little bit more leg room so i'm thinking about doing that that'll be the last thing and if i do i'll let you know how that works out if anybody has done that where they cut the table down or, or, or cut the bracket down you know uh give a comment in the description i'd love to hear how it went 
<clears throat> okay. Moving on. <clears throat> so, sorry, I got a frog in my throat. All right, there we go. So, something new for this year. I wanted to put this Lowrance on here. And uh, this is just the Hook, the Hook uh, 2 series. It's not the greatest um, uh, fish finder. But I think for my needs, you know, I'm not real big on using them anyway. And I, I need to need to start using them, especially if I'm going to be going to different lakes. Um, but I think this thing will work for obviously for water temperature and depth and, and um, you know, structure changes along the bottom, changes in, t in depth, things like that. And uh, we'll try this out. If, if I really start using it a lot, then uh, maybe I'll upgrade. Maybe that's something I can look to do down the line. But the bottom line is for this year, I wanted something more permanent. I don't know if you guys remember how we used to have it mounted. I used to actually have it mounted off the side of the table. And, yeah, it worked okay, but <clears throat> it was somewhat of a pain. And uh, so this is more, you know, more permanent in that, you know, no matter where I'm fishing, it can, uh, we don't have to necessarily use it. But we can't <clears throat> it'll always be there for us so all i did to mount this guy the little cable management here because i had plenty left over um used a, the scotty mount and uh kind of kind of gave up on the no holes in the boat thing you know what are you gonna do what am i saving it for so you know i think i was watching somebody else and they said hey if you got water all the way up here you know you got you know you got different issues so I just put it in there. I did put some marine silicone down in there in the holes. I think I'll be fine. So I had this Scotty arm left over from last time. So <clears throat> I already have this in position. And there's the transducer down there. I did a little research on that transducer. And from what I've been able to find, it doesn't matter what direction the transducer is pointed. As long as it's this is flat and level. This is uh, horizontal to the bottom or or whatever that is pointing straight down if you will so I've accomplished that it's not quite all the way down because it's hitting the side of my trailer here for demonstration purposes but it'll go a little lower but the nice thing about this the Scotty arms obviously you guys are probably familiar with these you know it makes it easy and then hard to do with one hand but and then you have this Scotty head mount thing and allows it to swing so when you're not using it you can get it up out of the way if we're not going to use it that's fine and um but and i could actually take it all the way off if i wanted to but i'm not going to do that because i don't want to be fooling with all these cables every time so it'll be fine it'll travel this way and uh i'm excited for it so i'm excited to use it let me put that back down easy to go uh my fishing partners this year will they'll be if they're fishing out of the front of the boat um They'll be uh, checking out the Lowrance. So there it is. I have it on a ram mount right here. And that's also bolted down or drilled into the boat. No problem. And uh, plugged in back here. So swinging around this side. Um, what I ended up doing was uh, I already had some Velcro there already. So I didn't have to drill holes. And I just... Ran it all the way back and into the battery. I can show you how I did it. What I ended up doing, I didn't want to have that separate battery. Let me move this out of the way for a second. I don't want to have that second trolling motor battery. It's something I didn't like about it last time. The connection always fell off or it just wasn't very secure. So I had one of these laying around in the old mod box over there. And uh, it was an old motorcycle uh, USB connector. So I basically spliced that into the wire of the, of the Lowrance. And it, it does have a quick disconnect, but it did have a nice connection for, for on my main battery. Uh, we'll see how this goes, running the Lowrance and the battery at the same time. But I honestly don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, this battery has... has uh, I've never really run out <clears throat> and now that I have the gas motor if I'm someplace that I gotta get um, long distance I'll have the outboard to get me there and the trolling motor to just keep us in position whenever we're fishing so there's the Lowrance it's uh it's set ready to go it, it works uh, you know obviously and um, it's all hooked up to the main battery one nice thing 
you know, when I get home, I charge the, I, I uh, have a, over there, I have a battery charger. I just charge this battery up every time. So I'll be charging up um, the uh, Lowrance as well. So the battery for the Lowrance as well. So we'll see. Um, get, I want to give this an honest effort this year and uh, see how it goes. And uh, we'll see how, see how I like it. And like I said, I'm going to be fishing different locations. So it's something that I, I really needed to, uh, you know, for lakes that I've never been to, it'll come in handy. All right. The other thing, big change for this year is I am going to fish out of the front of the boat. I've always fished out of the back. And um, so even when, and I'll show that configuration in a second, but even when, if I'm alone or not, if uh, if we have this set up, say when I'm going to Cross Creek with Steve or whoever else, Moraine, whatever, Lake Arthur, bigger lakes, um, we're going to have the trolling motor running out of the front almost all the time. Now, what I did with this guy is <clears throat> I went ahead and turned the head around. And um, that way, all I had to do is pop this off, turn it, and that way you're not always running it in reverse. Um, I can't really show you now because it's going to hit hit that. But a lot of guys that fish out of the front, you know, I saw that. Hey, you want to just switch the motor head on this thing, and that way when you're using it, you're in forward most of the time, and it'll it'll work great. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I've got two of these. This is my 40 pound that I I took this apart and and tried to tighten everything up. I was having a problem with this. It was just running on its own. It was plugged in. Right now, it's not doing that, so hopefully it's not going to do that again. I tightened everything down, and I think the switch is working just fine now. So, it gives me trouble. I'll turn the, turn the head on the 55-pound as well. The reason I didn't do that right out of the jump is if I'm fishing at an electric-only lake, no outboard, um, I'm going to want the 55 to be still back here and the head not turned around it'll be the main power source so all right so that is pretty much it for oh and one more thing and then we changed i just again kept it simple up here this is just a pvc pipe have to have something up here these these pole holders are terrible on the pelican bass radar i've talked about that before but we have these up here now and uh and if you're fishing out of the front which like i said i'm going to be all year um, those will be ready to go. So, all right. So that's the configuration for going to a lake with where they allow gas motor, and I'm with two guys. We got the narrow, narrow table. All right. Configuration number two. I'm going to the lake by myself. I can use the outboard motor. Um, but if you've watched uh, part one, or I think it was part two, I was showing how. It really is no good way to get around that table. You know, this guy over here. So what I what I figured out was, okay, what I'm going to do is just try to keep it simple. Let's just keep things simple. So in that case, if I'm going by myself, I only want one chair of all the room in the world. And in that case, I'll have to cut myself down to, you know, maybe four rods. So we've got the chair in the middle. And when I'm you know driving i'll just uh slide back here and uh slide back there run that and then when i get to where i'm at i'll have the whole front of the boat and run the trolling motor out of the front i'll have the lawrence right here should be set so what i did for poles since i can never go to the lake with one pole and um i never really liked the poles being up on this on these side rails of this pelican um, and most guys don't because they're afraid it's going to kick them into the water. So uh, what I'm going to do here is, or what I did do is, I just bought some simple straps and uh, put them on here. And they are easy to install. And that will keep me from kicking these things into the water. They don't have to be super tight. It's not like this thing's going to get up on plane and be going 40 miles an hour or anything. Um... And so this will keep these from falling into the water. And then I'll be there by myself, so I'll just be careful not to kick them overboard. But uh, that's all I'm going to do. So I'll just take four rods when I go in this setup. That ought to be enough, honestly. 
And if I have to retie, then you know, well, so if you know, if I want to change baits, if I have to retie, I can do that. So, and then put the same thing on this side, and um, it actually works pretty well for the for the bigger rods. The, there's no way this is going anywhere, so that'll work. So, just put tie downs on. Um, you know, I have all the room in the world when I'm doing this, so no table, four rods, and uh, should be good. I'll be fishing out of the front, have my Lowrance. This is be probably what I'm doing the most when I'm using that Honda motor, uh, I would say. So that's why I wanted to make sure that uh, I was ready to go in this sense. And um, again, troll the motor out the front. We'll have the Lowrance, explore some new lakes and see if we can't catch something something uh something different or more bass who cares so there you go that's configuration number two all right guys last setup and that would be electric motor only and i'm fishing by myself um big change this year would be like i had said i'm gonna be fishing out of the front uh, i hadn't normally done that I usually fished out of the back so i will have access to you know the lawrence this year uh, plenty of room in the front um I try to stand up a little bit more this year um, it's good for my back to stand up when I fish so uh, plenty of room in the front the table will sit in behind me and uh, as you can see even with the narrow table it has plenty of room you know for my tackle bag so um, and then obviously I've got the full complement of eight rods um, this will probably be the setup that I use probably 80% of the time just because um you know i fish alone a lot and also um a lot of the lakes where i take this pelican is electric only so i am looking forward to uh, having a lawrence new new bodies of water like i said um and fishing out of the front and seeing how that works i know guys have talked about uh, when you fish out of the front the back you know kind of sways around because of the you know no rudder but we'll deal with that and see how it goes and uh go from there so that's it guys the pelican modifications for 2022 nothing too too radical but uh you know obviously the big change would be an outboard motor and a more narrow table and uh, of course um the new actually it's not new but using uh a fish finder or lawrence this year so we're all set let's see what happens it's uh, end of February, so it's time to pretty soon get back out on the water. I can't wait. I know some of you guys that uh, live in the south are already fishing, so um, I've been uh, watching your videos and getting through the winter. But um, things coming up on Fishing with Vance. I've got to organize this tackle. I'm due for my annual Cabela's trip, but uh, before I go down there, I really don't need a whole lot, but I like to go anyway, but I'm not sure when I'm doing that. But... Before I go, I like to at least take some type of inventory. And like most people, I've got to tackle all over. There's some here. i got to address these. This is just junk. I don't know what's in there. Got to go through that. And then I have stuff back here, too. Um, and stuff up in there. So got to get through all that. I think I'm going to... I like the pegboard set up on the other side. And right there, that one's not the best because, it's again, it's overrun with the corner of junk, which needs addressed. And then, but I do like how this one turned out because I put the baits over here that I tend to use the most. You guys know you follow the channel. Um, I do tend to uh, use a lot of soft plastics. That's sort of just how I like to bass fish and what I have success with. So these are all the soft plastics that I use the most. Those of you guys that follow the channel know that I'm a big KVD uh, worm guy and also... Gary Yakamono, really been throwing these flukes a lot lately, and obviously the mustard tube. Um, if you're not throwing a tube for bass, you're missing out. So, anyway, maybe I'll, I'll throw something different this year. But, all right, that's going to be it. Let me wrap it up from Vance's Garage here on this uh, almost end of February. And uh, I'll be back to you soon. I'll maybe cut another video on uh, once I get the tackle all organized and uh, we'll look at some type of giveaway 
I haven't done a giveaway for a long, long time. And um, we crossed over 700,000 views. So I'm pretty proud of that. Long way to go to get to that million views as the goal, but we'll see what happens. And um, go from there. Getting excited for the season. And uh, I'll probably have a video on that, my tackle organization. And then I have one more re um, review on a couple carp rods that I bought last year from Cass King. So we'll do those. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. See you next time on FishingWithAnts.com. If you like this video, check out the playlist of all my other videos for uh, catching bass off the pelican, uh, trout, and also uh, really have gotten into carp fishing lately. Uh, in the off season here, uh, I do a lot of product reviews on um, the pelican um, fishing rods and reels, and then obviously lots of uh, pelican boat mod videos. So check those out. We have playlists for that. Hit subscribe, hit like, and comment. Thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,